What's up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you are new here, my name is Jasmine, DKA Curly Me Crazy, and welcome. Thank you for stopping by. If you are a returning viewer, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for always coming. I kind of wanted to do a part two of my labor and delivery um, video. So what that really means is like, I just kind of felt compelled to make another video where I'm like going in more depth and more detail about my um, labor and delivery story, kind of like what happened and how certain things went and how I felt about some things. Just basically the experience in itself, um, maybe some questions or some things that y'all might want to know um, that you may have had questions about watching the part one of my labor and delivery video. I don't want to make the intro too long. So before we get started, make sure you guys go and subscribe to my channel and yeah, let's get started. I'm just going to start like at the beginning. Um, of like when my water broke so basically I did get to experience the whole water breaking thing it was very interesting it was about 2 30 in the morning and uh, my boyfriend and I had fell asleep on the couch and I had um what woke me up was that I was like basically it felt like I was accidentally peed in my sleep so but it wasn't a lot it was, I was able to get up and I was able to go to the bathroom and so when I went to the bathroom I went pee like regular and um but when I came back, I had bent over to, to like, I think I had like, I think I was really uploading, I was trying to upload a video and I had bent over to type on the computer and more came out. Now it was like, it was like gushes of liquid. It wasn't like, it was, wasn't just a heavy flow of liquid at one time. And so, which was really interesting, which is why I had so many questions on what is this? Like, what is going on? Like, I don't know, because I, this is not what I assumed my water breaking would be like so you know i thought it was going to be a big whoosh and then i'm like oh my water broke let's go to the hospital yay uh, no it wasn't like that so you know i'm like waking my boyfriend like, let's go to bed um maybe like it'll stop once we get in the bed or whatever so we get in the bed and i lay down puddle immediately and i'm just like okay but remember it's not coming out like a heavy flow of anything so it's just like and then it stops and then it comes again and then it stops and then it happened again and so you know boyfriend's kind of like brushing it off like it's okay like you know um he starts googling stuff and it's kind of like oh people say they leak all the time and da -da -da -da. they're like do a pad test and so what a pad test is you put a pad on and then you let it flow or whatever let it do what it's doing and then you look and see what color it is um which will tell you if it's amniotic fluid or not and so um mine didn't have an odor to it it was clear um so you know I was just really confused and so once it it was about three o'clock and I was like babe what do I do like I don't know I was calling my sister trying to ask her what she what I should do no answer dead sleep <laughs> um so I finally called the labor and delivery line and I'm just like you know what babe I'm just gonna call them because if you watched some of my previous videos you will know that I was tested for um um beta strep whatever that is it's just it's not anything horrible but it's something that they do not want passed to the baby when you're having when you are in labor or when you're giving birth um so i called them and so i kind of am telling them what's what's going on how i'm feeling what's happening and she was like okay well go ahead and get your bags together and have somebody drip bring you to the hospital make sure you do not drive if you start feeling she she asked me if i was positive for hep b or, or whatever it's called the hep b virus and she was like, I was like, yes. She was like, okay, well, if you feel any body parts or cords hanging out, make sure you put your feet in the fetal position and da da da, da. It started freaking me out. I was like, okay, like, no, I'm not. Like, I wasn't in any pain. I wasn't, it was just fluid coming out of me at ridiculous amounts. And I just didn't understand what it was. So, you know, me and Dimitri, when she says go to the hospital, we kind of look at each other and we're like, oh, shit, this really might be happening. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we like, luckily my bags are packed. Yeah, so we're getting everything together. And so we're just kind of like not really talking. It's kind of awkward. It's just like, okay, babe, like, you know, well, this is really happening. It's just kind of like a little bit we're not really letting it, letting it sink in. I'm over here trying to like gather the last little few things that I need and my pants are like soaked and it's just crazy. So we're on the way to the hospital and my water really starts like 
it keeps happening but all of a sudden it was like that flow that heavy flow that you expect your what your water breaking would actually feel like is what happened it was like a good 25 seconds of just stuff coming out so yeah luckily we put um, some towels on the seat um when, so when, when we were getting there but yeah so it um my water definitely broke in the car so you know i'm like texting my family like hey guys um i believe my water just broke but i'm headed to the hospital i'll hit you guys up when i get when i get there and kind of figure out what happened so anyways fast forwarding i get to the hospital i'm in the bed i'm in the hospital bed and she does like a swab test on me like it's just a long q-tip and basically what happens is the tip of the of the q-tip long q-tip will turn greenish bluish and that's how you know if your water did break my water did break the color of the q-tip was the color that it was supposed to be if your water broke so they start strapping me up and have the baby's heartbeat you can hear the heartbeat and then they're also monitoring my contractions and so at this point i'm still having no pain it's about four o'clock we get we pull into the hospital around 3 47 by at least 4 15 i was in the bed and already seeing the the nurse so um so yeah she starts doing all that stuff so then she was like okay your water did break so she hooks me up and all that stuff and as you see in the video i like had to get an iv for the first time because i've never been in the hospital setting so that was really different um but i just feel like most of it was like a lot of my nerves it was just very like kind of like this really hasn't hit me yet like it's really happening right now and this baby is coming they're not i'm not gonna hop out of this hospital bed and go home and tell my family that it was a false alarm like this is happening so um so yeah so i start filling out paperwork and stuff and um she hooks me up to the iv and so initially it was a very slow start um because my water had broken had no contractions i technically was not in labor yet and they were gonna have to basically induce me but um i was supposed to see the midwife but the midwife had never showed up which was weird um but you know i took a nap and dimitri slept and around they came in my room about seven o'clock and had started prepping me to give me medicines so one of the medicines that was going to induce me was called um pitocin and pitocin was basically it's going to make my contractions start and help me dilate and so they start pitocin at the lowest dosage which is two and then they gradually they gradually go up from there and so you know um once she once she starts it you know i'm feeling a little bit of pain i'm like okay you know it's not bad it feels like my menstrual cycle it's not horrible and then as it keeps getting higher of course the pain starts to increase honestly by like a four i was like oh no sis mm -mm, this is not the wave um i'm very bad with pain like even my my girly time my cycle every month i can barely handle that so um just imagine having it amped up on you know it being you being in labor so so yeah so then she explains to me she was like well you have three doses of this IV medicine and basically with the IV medicine it i don't know what it was called but she just kept calling it IV medicine um but basically what it was what it did was like ease the pain so you still feel the contractions or you still yeah you still feel the contractions but they're not as heavy in the sharp pain you don't really feel it as much i got one dose of that and she was like it's gonna feel like you you just drank a whole fish bowl of liquor da, 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 and it definitely felt like that um but the thing about it the thing about that medicine was you get three doses only and you have and you have to wait an hour in between each dose but the thing about it was the first dose you felt the most the second dose you barely felt it and it and it wore off quicker and then by the third dose you don't really feel it um the nurse comes in she ups my she ups my uh pitocin up to a six right so i have to use a restroom and so i'm like okay um can somebody help me up i gotta use the restroom or whatever what happened was i got up to go to the bathroom and when i went to the bathroom you know everything was cool i actually told the doctor i was like is it okay if i stand up and walk around um i can take the i can take the pain a lot easier when i'm standing up and so all of a sudden the nurse goes super quiet she's like i need you to sit down i need you to sit down right now she's like just have a seat have a seat and i'm like okay and i'm like trying to listen to her and she's like okay i need you to lay down i'm like and i'm and, I, and me I'm, I'm thinking nothing's wrong but you know they don't tell you when something's wrong when it's happening they just try to take every precautious measure um to get you to better or to get to fix whatever is happening so anyway she's like i need you to lay down i need you to lay down they like lay me out completely like flatten the bed turn me to my side nurses and doctors are coming in and like they're like um and all i hear is heart heart rate dropped 
and so they like put the oxygen uh, mask on me they like flip me over the doctor shoves her fingers up with me and like checks me um like super quick everything is just happening so quick and i start to freak out like i start breathing heavily i start hysterically crying because i don't know what's going on but i'm also trying to stay calm so that the doctors can do what they need to do to figure out what's going on or to to fix whatever's going on and so by the time they're done i'm like shaking and freaking out and she tells me she was like the pitocin your your um your daughter's not taking well to it and so basically what that means is like the like i said the pitocin makes your cramp your contractions happen and so when um i guess when the contractions were happening nova was not here for it like she just couldn't handle it the pitocin was up at four i was like you know she was like by the looks of the way you're handling these contractions are you sure you want your epidural you don't want your epidural whatever i was like you know i'll take it i'll take it so i get the epidural and this is the worst part of like probably the worst pain of the entire my my entire labor and delivery story it was pretty excruciating um so basically what a lot of people think that an epidural is which i thought it was, what i thought an epidural was um a shot i thought it was just a shot but no it's actually a like a catheter thing that they stick in your back and that stays in your back but basically it just hurt so bad when he was doing it and then he had to do it twice because he, the first time he put it in like a blood vessel it was just all types of painful like i was just really having to do some breathing exercises because the epidural was probably the worst part doing it you have to like push back on him and like into it like literally pushing and, and even thinking about it and talking about it right now i can literally feel the pain all over again um but once it's done it's done and it's pretty it's fairly quick um and then the medicine it kicks in pretty immediately my legs were heavy my you know i couldn't really feel them anymore um so once i got the epidural i couldn't feel any contractions um the most that i that i felt from the contractions was like pressure in my um like my butt area it felt like i in the video if you watch my labor and delivery video i literally say you know i feel like i can shoot she's coming out of my butt like because it literally felt it's like a lot of pressure on your butthole basically um so that's like the most i even felt that's how i knew i was having contractions but other than that if that if that wasn't a thing I wouldn't have known I was even having a contraction. So the epidural definitely worked. I know for some people, like, they were like, it only worked in, like, one leg or da 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 Like, no, it definitely worked for me. Um, but the only thing about the epidural was that it made me throw up a lot. I was vomiting most of the time um, of my time being in labor. And, I, and that was the only horrible part. Like, I was just nauseous the whole time. And apparently they said that's normal and that throwing up is what they like to see because it shows that your body's making changes with the epidural that it's working. I don't know, but I hate throwing up. And so that part was not fun There was There was two times that they had to come in and basically like start doing all kind of crazy stuff. It was like the first time when she first started tripping out when I went to the bathroom. And then the second time um when i hit pitocin eight so nova just really couldn't handle the contractions um she just couldn't handle it so um so then they start saying you know you're gonna have to have a c-section and um if you know me you know how bad i did not want to have a c-section um so it gets like really emotional because you know, if you watch my labor and delivery video, I did end up having um, to have a C-section and talking about it still is very emotional. Um, I... It just kind of like freaks me out because, you know... I felt like, you know, it was like my fault, like she she couldn't take it because of something that I did or like whatever it was. And, um, you know, I'm less of a mommy because I couldn't push my baby out and I like and now we have to take these precautious measures and have a C-section and I have to get cut open and now I'll never be able to have a vaginal birth. And like, you know, being able to push your child out is like an experience that. I might not ever be able to 
um, experience and I know it sounds crazy but you know who wants to be cut open every time they have to have a baby um, um, I'm sorry it's just really emotional and you know my emotions and my hormones are still all over the place um, so but yeah so um, okay let me get it together so yeah, when she tells me that, I get I just start hysterically crying, and um, and it's even more scary because Dimitri at this point is not in the room. He because before all of this happened, before Nova started like tripping tripping out, um, the the nurse checked me and she was like, "You're only two centimeters dilated. You know, you'll probably be here for a while, for another 24 hours, and all this stuff." And so. I'm like he he went to go and run run a quick errand and I was like yeah babe just go like we'll be here like nothing's gonna happen like it is what it is and so even that was like scary like that's another thing like while I was crying like Dimitri is not here right now like like I want him to hold my hand yes my mom is here yes you know I have people who like in the room right now that can comfort me but he's who I want right now in this room uh especially when she told me that I was gonna have it to have a c-section because if anybody knew how bad I did not want to have a c-section it was him so the prepping for c-section I know a lot of the stuff that um, I did not record um because I couldn't record um and a lot of things that just happened so quick and so once um they came in and they prepped me basically giving me certain medicines and things like that they had numbed up my whole body so like literally from my neck down i could not feel anything i could move my arms they were the most they were the least numb but everything else i could not feel a thing like literally and so whatever they had given me to numb me up even more had was making me vomit even more and mind you I had already been vomiting before and so they were um basically um they had to put these things around my legs that basically it was like a massager and so which helped my legs not like um have blood clots and things like that um what else did they do they gave me like some type of like liquid medicine to where I um, wouldn't have gastric reflexes um, when I was finished with the C-section and um, what else? They had me on this with this knit cap on my head and um, I had to make sure I took all my jewelry off because I definitely had earrings in and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, I threw my way up all the way down to the OR and just just crying just like so hysterical because i just was just like this has ha this has to happen like there's no there's nothing i can do i am no longer in control of this situation and i guess like what i guess like the only thing that makes me content with the situation is the fact that it was the healthiest decision for nova and i we are safe and healthy right now so and that's the only thing i can ask for and that's the only thing i can be happy about um but you know because even after all those hours 18 hours in labor i was only two three centimeters dilated or three and a half centimeters dilated so my labor process was not picking up the way it was supposed to um and so it was either have a c-section and where dimitri i can be awake and dimitri can be there or wait until we have to do an emergency c-section and i have to go to sleep and dimitri cannot be in the room because it's an emergency section and i guess it's different um so you know it was just like all right like y'all win we have to have c-section i get it um what was cool about the c-section though was that dimitri was able to be there with me and be by my head um behind the curtain c-section was not as easy breeze as you think yeah you're numbed up and you don't have to push and have to do nothing but i was so numbed up that i like i like couldn't th like i literally couldn't swallow like it felt like i couldn't even breathe this is literally how i was breathing um during the whole c-section <laughs> the whole time i could just hear dimitri like encouraging me like it's okay they're almost done you're doing so good pain wise i did not feel anything of course but i felt pressure that pressure was pain in itself it was i'm talking like it was weird kind of pressure like weird kind of pressure and like right when they came, brought her out it was like a like a deep deep push and then it was pop baby's here and then she here crying and it was really emotional they put down the curtain and let you see her through the clear curtain and um 
and like you know me and Demetri are just having a moment really emotional they go clean her up and I'm like what's going on does she have tip fingers ten toes like asking all these questions um meanwhile I can't freaking breathe and I'm, my mouth is full of spit and the, the nurse has to keep giving me napkins so I can spit it out <laughs> because I literally couldn't breathe um I mean, I couldn't swallow. Yeah, so once she was all cleaned up, they wrapped her up and brought her to us. And mind you, he's like right here next to my head, um, sitting down. And so um, they bring her to us. He's holding her, puts her next to me. And it's just like a cry fest because, you know, I'm emotional. And so I'm just bawling because, you know, it's my baby. And she's finally here and finally get to see her. She came out looking in just like her father. So, um... It was really, it was emotional and so, but um, um, Dimitri had to end up leaving and going to the recovery floor with Nova. Um, that is where they did the first bath and all that fun stuff that you guys seen in the video. And then meanwhile, I was stuck in the OR while they closed me up and all that good stuff. But once I was closed up, they let me go and I was in the recovery room. So now, now that the C-section is over, we're in the recovery, we're on the recovery floor and um we're here for about like an hour and a half um basically they're like take checking my vitals and they're um i can't really remember what else they did in there with me i just remember being drugged up and like kind of in, in it but also kind of out of it um but you know Dimitri learned how to swaddle the baby in, in this room and you know we just basically got to really see our baby. Oh, I latched for the first time in this room as well in recovery so that was interesting and Nova latched perfectly fine. Um, it was no problem her latching on to me because um, I am plant I do I am breastfeeding strictly so um, her latching was no problem at first. Um, so yeah so once we're done with recovery we they basically wheel me to the room and um we end up seeing my family um they're in the waiting room of the floor that we're on and so yeah from there it's just like okay we have this baby like here you go <laughs> like basically you know motherhood parenthood starts right now so um it was very it was really cool it was good to have my family there and stuff like that so you know that when you have a c-section it is more time in the hospital um i think i was there for four days there are certain things that they check for for women who have c-sections which is like your bowel movements whether or not you're passing gas and um how well your incision is healing so i couldn't eat for the first 12 hours after my surgery um so that was kind of sucky but it was cool because by the morning time i was able to have breakfast um i couldn't shower for 24 hours um so basically what recovery was like was um not too bad um nurses were just like checking my incision um constantly making sure it was good checking my body they were doing leg tests and and my, my feet testing my feet to make sure i was not swollen or there were no pains in certain spots to make sure there were no clotting there was no clotting and things like that um those massagers I mentioned earlier were still there until the 24 hour mark. I still had the epidural in my back, which was hooked up to this little remote thing that I could continue to give myself doses of drugs if I needed it, if the pain was bad. And I was also still had the IV hooked up to me, which was giving me the penicillin, I believe. It definitely wasn't Pitocin anymore, um, but I believe it was the penicillin, if I'm not mistaken. But I do know that before we could wean me off any of the drugs. I had to wait till that IV bag was completely out. And then by, and that that really didn't happen until the 24 hour mark. Um, or like the, the next day, I just know the next, by the next morning slash afternoon, I was good to go when it came to um, being able to take the epidural on my back and take the, the thing. Oh, one thing I did not mention was um, I ended up having to be put on, I ended up having to have a catheter put in me. So where I could not use the bathroom by my own, I would I had the tube up me to help me go to the bathroom. Um, because I could no longer get up anymore because of what happened to Nova when I did get up the first time. Um, so by the 24 hour mark again, I was, I had this taken out a little before the 12, 24 hour mark. I had that taken out along with my IV, along with the epidural. Um, they were able to wean me off. Um, by the next morning, I was um, 
by the next morning after the c-section by around like 10 o'clock my nurse came in and started like having me move around i had got up you know i wasn't doing too much movement but i was i had to go use the restroom and make sure like you know i had pads on because you are bleeding heavily in the at first and so um so she just kind of helped me maneuver and showed me where things were as far as being able to use the bathroom on my own um when they took the catheter out though one thing that had to be done was she had to monitor my urine three times in a row to make sure i was urinating enough and making sure i was getting everything out and so um but luckily every time was good and so um i was able to be able to take and be taken off the the drugs and things like that they initially had me hooked up to so all those things played a factor in whether or not i could be weaned off of the drugs or not and so um but once everything cleared off and i was weaned off that was when they started to give me the pills which was the percocets and the ibuprofen and the um and the other stuff that i was taking um i was taking percocets like every four hours um or as needed but it was pretty much every four hours and um which wasn't which wasn't bad like the Percocets just made me really sleepy but the first night after labor after giving birth it was I was just exhausted like I was so tired and it was just it was just an exhausting day along with Nova being up in the night already um the first night so it was just like it was just an interesting it just was all new and so um it was just a lot a lot a lot to take in and so like as you should rest in the hospital we have a lot of friends and a lot of family so there were people coming every day every hour there was somebody coming uh to see us um which isn't bad i'm not complaining i really enjoyed the company but i also wasn't sleeping i didn't recognize that till it started to like get to me so from here on out once i hit the 24 hour mark i was able to take a shower um and and I was able to eat whatever I wanted to um, because I was my bowel movements and things like that were normal. I was I was able to get things out. And so I feel like my healing process has been and is very healed very well. Um, I cannot really complain about that. I mean, yes, it's going to have its, its normal pains. Um, and so now that I'm at the hospital, I am moving a lot better than a, most people who are who are postpartum from a C-section. Um there i mean i haven't had to be like resting i mean i probably should be resting but i haven't had to um be like in the bed resting uh because i'm in so much pain x y and z um which is cool um i just make sure i was prescribed the percocet and the ibuprofen to come home with um my, and not the dosage that they give at the hospital but the, the lower dosage um but it still works other than that like recovery and things like that have been good we have made a return home and um you know we're all adjusting very well to nova being here and um yeah that's pretty much everything from my labor and delivery that like i kind of just wanted to talk about and kind of go into depth about kind of things that were maybe were like question marks in my labor and delivery video from pre from before um but now i was able to kind of elaborate on like what happened now my experience was um and i just i will say that like you know after having like a really amazing pregnancy yeah my labor and delivery was not perfect but at the end of the day i was able to conceive a perfect and most beautiful and blessed little child so at the end of the day like all the other stuff like happened how it was supposed to happen and that was god's story for me and his plan for us and um and everything worked out how it was supposed to work out um and yeah yeah if there's anything that i kind of like didn't touch on or that you guys wanted me to answer questions about um let me know in the comments and i will answer them for you guys thank you guys for watching and sticking it out if you're still here to the very end of this video um i appreciate you for sure and make sure you guys like subscribe and share my video to everyone and anyone any mommies out there any um mom people seeking or interested that are just like weirdos and like to watch people's labor delivery videos because that's how i was before i even got pregnant so don't Feel like you're weird um but yeah thank you guys for watching and i will see y'all in my next video